Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm okay, yeah, I'm okay. How are you getting on? I'm all right, yeah, yeah, it's lockdown, it's um, getting boring, obviously, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing well, man. You all right, yeah? Yeah, good, yeah. Uh, it's kind of starting to ease up a little bit now. Yeah, um, it's getting the same sort of thing. Yeah, well, you, you're lucky, you, you're after getting the go-ahead to go back training, isn't it? All elite athletes are allowed to, to go uh, back. The 14th or something, every, every, like, everywhere that ain't open now is allowed to open or mm. something like that of some sort. But like I say, I mean, I've been, we've been in the gym, you know, one 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 to one sort of thing. Yeah. So going in there, just me and the coach sort of thing. But, but yeah, it's, 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 it's getting better now. It's getting better. So up until this point, uh, what were you doing? Were you just doing stuff at home or just yeah, kind of like cardio? Got, what was the plan? Just a bit of, obviously everyone runs and I got a, I got a bag in the garage. I brought myself a rowing machine. Just bits and bobs. Um, strength coach have been sending me some stuff to do. Um, I've, I've had all I need, really. Yeah. I've had no one to shout at me to do it a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> How would you get on with the diet? Uh, do you know what? I weighed when I went back to the gym and I weighed. And it's not as bad as I thought, you know. It really isn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's not as bad as I thought. I, I was pleasantly surprised, to be fair. Good, good, good to hear. Um, so what, what would you have had scheduled or would you have had something scheduled for this time? Um, late March, we had, um, I was on the Channel 5 bill, you know, Shaq and Peters was topping. Yeah. Obviously that got cancelled. So um, at, up to this point, nothing really. I mean, after the Channel 5 thing, we had nothing planned. Mm. So by the Channel 5 bill, um, it's, it's been the same for me really. I've had no, I ain't, I ain't lost nothing or lost any opportunities yeah um except for the channel five show so it's kind of uh, like in this time obviously it's kind of we can say sort of like three months that we've had with, with quarantine mm-hmm. and different bits and in that time it seems like a lot of fighters have had like a, a lot of time to reflect and yeah. to kind of look back on not only their careers but where they're going has there been anything for you has there any been major things where you've said okay th- this is what i need to start doing or this is the new kind of direction that i need to go in I think a lot of it is, I mean, I never regret anything, I mean, because I feel like I'm in a good position at the moment, so yeah. I don't regret anything. I mean, people always say to me, you, you jumped into the Liam Smith fight, you shouldn't have done that, but without the Liam Smith fight, I wouldn't have got the it- Italian shot. Yeah. So, it's a double-edged sword in that sense, but normally, I don't do no, unless it's a fight date, I won't train, and that's not because I just I'm just lazy, I suppose, but with this three months being enough, I've trained every day since the lockdown started. And I think I think what, what I've learned really is that, you know, with no fight date, you should still be doing something. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm lazy. I've got the three kids and I'm, I'll make any excuse, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know, I'll take them to the ball pit or something and, and <laughs> I won't train when I'm out of camp. But I think what it is, just, just stay ticking over. I think that's been my worst problem from the start, really. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? You know, like the, everyone on social media talks a big game anyway, right? It's part of it's part of social yeah, media. Yeah. But loads of people, do, fighters, you're in this time. Been like, you know, I'll be ready. All yeah, those yeah. guys are on the couch. I'm working hard, you know, yeah. and that kind of thing. So it's good. It's it's after kind of there's a bit of banter off the back of it as well, isn't it? I think a lot of people as well have thought, I need to fight ASAP. Yeah. So I know we've had three months off, but the last month and a half, people probably have really been putting their work in thinking, <laughs> I need to be able to go as soon as that. As soon as they give me the green light, I need to be able to get on it. So I think a lot of people have started putting up, you know, tweets and, and so on, just so the phone rings. Yeah. Just so they can say, yeah, I've got something coming up. So a lot of people need someone coming up. I'm the, I'm the same. I need someone coming up to to get in and, and get started, really. Mm. A lot of the time I'm playing catch-up just because I'm too lazy when they're in a fight day. I, I won't be doing anything. Um, but luckily enough, I, I, I kept on it for, for this like this thing, this whole like COVID thing. And I, I, said, I put a tweet out the other day. Within 10 minutes, my coach had rang me and said, look, Eddie's been on the phone. Um, if you're ready, we can we can try and sort something. So I'm just hoping we can sort something with Eddie and, and see if we can get on ASAP. Well, this is another thing that I wanted to ask you about because obviously Eddie Eddie does a lot of promotion anyway, but he seems to be you've gone into overdrive and quarantine. You know, he's yeah. popping up everywhere. It's brilliant. 
But um, there has been a couple of times where he, he people have been asking him about potential matchups, and you know that this is a great time because it's going to be the best of British versus British and mm. all this kind of stuff. And your name has cropped up quite a bit. So yeah. does does the 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 opportunity to get to fight us the mushroom HQ does that excite you? You know, is it kind of like I'll be ready? Just get me a get me a name yeah. over there. I think not even just to, to get out of ASAP. I think I think it'll go down in history. I think it, yes. to find someone like someone's back garden, no one there. There be I don't know a few judges, and you know maybe they might have you know some some friends right and with four people on each side of the ring screaming or something. <laughs> I think it'll go down here, so I'd love to be on one. Um, and anything I do to to be on one, I will do. I, I generally, I think it'll be a great opportunity and it'll be a mad event. It'll be a mad thing to do, like, to look back on when you've done it. It'll be crazy. Absolutely. And, I mean, you are in probably one of the better positions as well because you've experienced small hall shows. Yeah. So you, you've experienced that, you know, and I'm being an away fighter as well. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of well documented that you started being an away fighter. So you're used to going into kind of uncomfortable territories or different yeah. territories. Um, you know, do you think that not having a crowd there that that will play a big part in your performance or your nerves or your kind of how you would go about the fight? I don't think so. I mean, I always say you, you, if I was going to have a fight in front of a crowd, I'm having a fight. I want to win that fight. Yeah. Um, if I'm having a fight and no one's there, you're still having a fight. You want to win that fight. So I don't see it being much different. I mean, the ring walk will be really strange and weird and quiet and eerie. But past the ring walk, I think it'll be just... Because you go into like tunnel vision anyway. A lot of people say, you know, you get tunnel vision, you get your opponent. Um, so I don't think it'll be that strange. I mean, in between rounds, no one's there. I think that'll be a bit weird. But for me, I've always said... I'll, I'll fight in my own back garden as long as I get paid. I don't mind. <laughs> um, so to do it at Eddie Hearn's mansion back garden, I'm all up for that. hundred percent. I agree with you there. Uh, have you got your Wi-Fi on by any chance? You're, you're, you've got, you've, you've, you've frozen on us. Oh no, nah, this is, this is just Wi-Fi. I mean, what do I... When it's moving now. Is that bad? You froze. <laughs> I can hear. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. One. Yeah, I can hear you. Good stuff. Good stuff. But um, yeah, so it's an interesting time. Um, and and good to hear that he's been on the phone. So that means that yeah. you know it's more than him just 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 kind of putting out uh, potential fights out there. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, I I, I never take anything um, unless it's concrete. You know, yeah. I wouldn't put anything out there. I mean, he's been on the phone you know, numerous times. You know, I spoke to Barry on the phone. Um, so it, it looks it looks promising, honestly. But, you know, things ain't, things ain't been agreed as such. But I know I'm happy to box and then I'm sure they'll find someone, you know, who's happy to box me. How has the experience been, you know, obviously with this time off? Look, look have, you, have you done some reflecting at the kind of like the journey that you've taken? Because you've kind of got one of those very special careers in terms of, you know, how you started and yeah. what's been very apparent in your kind of interviews that you've done to date is that, you know, you've just taken the fights, you've rolled with the punches, you've gone with, you know, whatever comes up, the opportunities that present themselves to you. And for someone that started out with, I just need to fight for, say, financial reasons to support mm. your family, to then go on and win all these titles and to now be fighting on Matchroom shows and, and to be included in, in, a, in the potential lineup for these massive big shows at Matchroom. You know, it's, it's, it's impressive, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I've kind of just, like you said, I've rolled with the punches. Um, I've fought on small horse shows. And when I, when, I, when I boxed on the O2 against Malinaji, mm. um, pay-per-view, I was chief support. It generally didn't phase me. I generally walked in just like I would at any other social club. I got ready, I boxed, and I went home. I drove home that night. I drove back to Birmingham. It was no just, way. Yeah, I just... <laughs> and I think... Like, like Barry took us to Vegas, sparring and so on. I think I just treated that as training. It's training. Um, I think I'd like to have go back a bit and enjoy it a bit more. Yes, yeah. I think I've kind of just gone there. It's work. You know, I've I've done what I've had to do, and I've gone home, and that's that's it. 
Mm. Um, I've never stayed anywhere. You know, I stay past a fight. Most of the time, I stay in the, ho in the hotel on the night, and I go home. I go straight back to the kids, and you know, I have as as long as I, I can with the kids. Um, but I would like to, like, if I could, I'd go back and I'd enjoy a lot of the things more. Um, do you do but, you think that that way of being has sort of contributed to your success in a little bit? The fact that it doesn't seem you're very very humble, very you seem very grounded, and you seem that you know of all these big opportunities that you get, and you know you 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 embrace them, but also then you just go back to normal life and and you keep yeah. moving forwards. I think it's a good thing in in a way, but like I say, it's a bad thing because I didn't enjoyed it as much as I could have. I think, but going into the old two, um, chief support. If I grew up loving boxing, I could have froze because you know I'm on the big stage, I'm on a pay per view. That 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 sort of stuff can freeze people. Like I yeah. But to me, because it was just it was just work. I just generally went in there. Um, John was like, "Let's have a walk round." You know, my coach was like, "Let's have a walk round. We'll have we'll, we'll look at the place." And I was like, "Just let's go and chill. <laughs> like we'll, we'll be back later anyway. Don't worry about it." Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like I say, I'd love to go back and, you know, enjoy it a lot more. Like I say, I was there for the whole week for the pay-per-view. Yeah. I was just, I don't know, it's just, it's, yeah, it's just... I was well, like, especially with the Paulie Malinaji fight because of his legacy and his, yeah. you know, his his career. Yeah. Like, even for members of the media, he's kind of like someone that can be sort of, you know, you can be intimidated or... You know, you could be nervous about interviewing him because of like you, you've grown up. I mean, I grew up watching him on TV. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it, it's it's very interesting to hear. And that could be something as well that, you know, plays into his favor in terms yeah. of being in a fight with someone like you. That he's kind of yeah. like, he's going to get nervous because I'm who I am. Yeah, I think he thought that was going to be the case because I saw a lot of videos beforehand and, you know, he was, he was saying some things. But to me, again, it was like more off the duck's back because I was just like, it means nothing. I, I always say, as long as I do what I'm in, do like got to do in the gym, it shouldn't really matter, you know, interviews mm. and so on. So, but yeah, because he was talking to the coaches whilst we were fighting. He was, he was like, "What do you feed this kid after a weigh-in?" And he was talking <laughs> to my own coaches, and I was like, "What sort of madness is this?" But <laughs> it, it, it all ended well, obviously. But yeah, he's a cool guy, and he, you know, he still he still talks to like to me and my coach. Even now, like my coach will send him sparring videos, and he will he will get back to us with what he thinks and what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. Um, next opponents, he'll look through them for me, and yeah, he's generally a cool guy. And every time he's in England, he always messages and says, "Do you want to come up for dinner?" Most no way for the uh, the ultimate boxer, any? Yeah, yeah. So every time he's here, he always says, "Like you know, we're in Manchester. Do you want to come up for dinner?" Or yeah, that's so, so nice to hear because I think he has. I think it might have been around the 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 kind of the press with Connor and and Artem Lobov and different things. He sort of got a negative yeah. um, spin in the press, and ever since then, it's kind of been very difficult for him. I think to get back into sort of the positive news yeah. columns. So he get he does get a bit of a hard time. So it's nice to hear that you know yeah, he is a nice guy. Do you know what I mean? And he's, that he's, he's really cool. I mean, even on the night of the fight, before I went home, he, he made sure that he met me and had a drink and everything in the bar. So. And his whole his whole group, his whole entourage was there. So, yeah, he's generally really a cool guy, man. It's lovely to hear. So, in terms of your own career, then, do you think like can you remember or do, or what was the moment where you noticed the public kind of taking notes of you? Would it have been the Paulie Malnagy fight? Um, was it up then until Liam Smith? Like, when did you start to recognise it? The public, as in like the whole of the UK. I mean, because I started selling tickets. As soon as I was on Sky, really, you know, people yeah. people jump on board straight away. Then I mean, I fought Shane Singleton first, and I, and I think I, mm. I sold about one twenty for that over in Hull, and that was away, and that was huge for me at the time for my first few fights. When I won a Midlands total, I sold about twenty two tickets. Yeah, you know, I got three siblings, mum and dad, and a girlfriend, including there. So <laughs> I, got, you know, I, got, I got no real like I ain't got no entourage. So, but um. <laughs> I think I won the European. I think that was huge. The British as well. I went and won the British because, you know, Glenn Foote was a, you know, an England, you know, he was he was massive on the England squad and, you yeah. know, he was touted to do well. He don't, you know, he won the prize for it that I was in at the start. Um, so I think 
I think a lot of people started taking note when I beat Glenfoot because I beat him well as well. I think, you know, I really done the job on Glenfoot, and I think I don't think people was gonna was expecting that. Um, yeah. So I think from from the Glenfoot fight, I think people really started to take note. Do you think that you sort of thrive as a fighter in situations where you're going into a fight as an underdog, or you're going in as not the favorite, or that there is, you know, there's there's talk online with the fans that you might not win this. Do you think you kind of try yeah. in those? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think I've always my coach will always say oh, I'm I'm a better chaser than I am, you know. Yeah. Trying to you know trying to keep stuff up. Like if I'm fighting for something I've never had, then you know I'm a hard man to beat. Yeah. Um, defending something, I think I find harder. You know, you know the whole camp. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, uh, being a, being an underdog definitely helps me. I think um, being the away fighter, being the underdog, not meant to win, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, I love that. I love that shit. I know, you know, it's well documented as well that your start that you um, you were let go from a job. Is that right? And that's where you decided yeah. to to get into professional fighting. I can't think of many people who would choose fighting. <laughs> Um, well, to, to, well, they've been laid off, but you know, I was, think the fans are delighted you did. You know, um, Craig Cunningham. Yes. It'd be a go go. So we went to the same amateur gym. No um, way. Yeah. So I had my my son at seventeen, and I got a job. So I just packed the boxing in, um, and then when I got made redundant, and I heard about this journeyman thing, and I knew that Craig had done it properly, like turned over properly, tried to get um, a trainer and manager, and I was just like. I heard about this thing. Is there any chance I can come up to your gym and have a word with your coach? And then you know, the rest is history. Like, it, and it, that's what it, that's what makes the story so great, you know. Is then what you went on to achieve and what you're still achieving is like yeah. it's a proper kind of like rags to riches sort of story. Do you know that kind of way? It's like yeah, it's, real it's, under, underdog story. My first bar, um, John put me in with Maxwell, Max Maxwell, um, Carruthers. Um, D Mitchell there was a few up there at the time Cello Render and he, as soon as I got out of the ring after my first wife he said I don't think we're going to be able to go on the road he said but <laughs> we'll give it a go and, and, and it's gone from there really Has your motivation changed in terms of you know when you started out you might have taken fights or wanting to win because obviously you're trying to provide for your family but now yeah. that you see what you can achieve and what you have achieved has the sort of goal changed for you over the years? Um, I think, I think it, it it hasn't. It hasn't. I mean, I'm always here to to win titles and and better my career and and mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, win something huge. Like I say, I've only got one bout to win, and that's a world title. And I, if I could do that, you know, I'd, I'd do that for free. Yeah. But um, I'm always trying to better the kids' lives and you know my missus' life and you know sort sort of out forever sort of thing. So. It never ends with the, with the, with the money thing. I'm always trying to to make sure that everyone's comfortable, um, mm. and and that's been the plan from the start. And I don't think that'll ever change. You know, how I, old if, are you now? I'm 26 now. It's still quite young, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I started when I was 18. I turned over straight away because, like I said, I was I'd quit boxing. I'd had my son at 17, um, so as soon as I could, I just I just jumped straight on it. How did you find and how do you find having the responsibility of a young family at such a young age? Do you know what? I, I, wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done any of this without my son. I know I wouldn't mm. have. I, I 100% know that for a fact. I'd, I'd have gone from job to job, you know, no matter what I was doing. I was, I was a forklift driver at the time, so I'd have probably got another forklift job because I wouldn't have been in any rush. So yeah. I'd, have just, I'd have just sat back at my mum's, waited for another job. Um, I know I wouldn't have done any of this without my, my son in the first place. So, um, without the kid, none of this would have happened. I guarantee that. Mm. Are they old enough to recognise what you do? Yeah, they are, and they ain't. I mean, I try to keep. I, if they wanted to box, I would let them. But I try to steer them away so bad it's unbelievable. Like, why is that? I just it's 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 a fickle game. Um, mm. you can be the king and then. You know, one fight goes wrong and that's it. You, you you're a nobody again. People are giving you grief and that. And I, I just couldn't. I couldn't. 
I couldn't sit and w- sit back and watch the kids do that. I mean, if they wanted to do the amateur stuff, I'd love them to do that. But mm-hmm. the professional stuff, probably not. No. Um, they watch it and they see the bouts. I don't think they they get what the bouts mean or anything. Yeah. Um, they just know when Dad gets back on a Sunday after fighting, it's time to go to Smith's or something. <laughs> That's literally it. It's the same thing every time. How do you deal with the the kind of the ups and downs like you spoke about? about uh, I suppose we look at social media for one because yeah. with the role of social media, everyone has an opinion and everyone seems to be um, a boxing analyst or a yeah. boxing expert um, having never trained or stood in the ring. Um, so how, how do you deal with the, the kind of ups and downs that come with the game? I mean, I, I just, I don't really read them if I'm honest. I don't read mm. much. I read a lot, a lot of the stuff I read is after a fight. Win, lose or draw, I read a lot of them after a fight. Just mainly because I want to see what's... But I've had people tell me I should have retired early. Um, mm-hmm. I had people early telling me I should have retired even when I lost, you know, for, in the first prize fight, the second prize fight. I, um, and the way I box, I probably won't even reach 24 without being punch drunk and so on. And these are people that are from Birmingham, boxing mm-hmm. trainers. So... I don't really, I don't really, um, it goes in one ear and out the other, if I'm honest, so. It's probably if the I best way. When people were telling me to, I wouldn't have done anything, you know. Yes. So hey, that's a really good point. Be, that's a super point. Just let them talk. If it, Absolutely. If it makes them feel better. Then. I agree. I agree. Um, so while we were talking, everyone has an opportunity to send some questions in if they want to ask you questions. So I'm just going to have a look and see. Yes. What uh, what's in there? Um, oh, there's a good question. Uh, Jake SWFC10 has asked, uh, describe your career in three words, Sam. Um, uh, <laughs> it's been I don't know what to say. Three words. It's hard. That's a good. That's a good question. I'm totally yeah. going to steal that for my next interview. Um. <laughs> Ups and downs, I suppose. That's perfect. Ups and yeah. downs. Yeah. Um, I lost early and I won early, so. That's definitely a good one. Um, Kyron Coulson Boxing has just popped in a question. He said, uh, Sa- uh, you versus Ted Cheeseman, what do you think of that? I think it's a great fight, like I say. Um, you know, he's just lost the British title. I don't think the British title is being contested. Um mm-hmm. So he's, he's well up there in the British rankings. If if we can make that happen, then I'm well up for it. I think it's a great fight. I think so. I think a lot of the fans have been saying that for a while, haven't they? Yeah. Um, let's have a look here. Um, so Fez H- K- HKC has asked, um, what was the feeling or how did you feel when you beat Pauli Malnagy? Again, it was just... It was... it was Because I didn't think I was winning that fight. So to get the stoppage was was mad. I, I was over the moon with that. Um, I thought it was running away from me in the fight. So, you know, when, you, when someone's going and you catch it quite late, you know, I, I was yeah. over the moon. I was buzzing because, again, um, it's poorly man and it, it, you know, I was fighting from. I was defending my title at the time as well, so I didn't want him to come over and take my title and, and then go back. So, yeah, it was, it was a it was a great night. I'm so glad. Can you remember anyone from that night, like big names that came up to you, and what did they say? Again, no, nah, we. Really, I mean, I was in and out. I generally don't <laughs> stay long. I, I get changed. I have a wash. I literally, I, I only stayed for the drink with, with uh, my coach and that because Paulie asked me to. Um, <laughs> I was already ready to go, and I had bags packed. I was in the, I was in the lobby with my bags, <laughs> and my suitcase. I was ready to go. Um, I remember speaking to Frutch at at breakfast of the of the fight. I've still got the picture. I could if I could send you the picture. Probably not now because I'm on the phone, but I've still got the picture of me and Frutch at breakfast. Um, no way. Morning. Yeah. So did he say um, anything to you? He, he just he just said you know be you. Um, being yeah. you should win this fight. Um, 
you know, it's no secret, Pauly Man and Adi was, you know, getting on. So yeah. me being a young fighter and the way I box, he said, be you and, and that should win this fight. Be Just be relentless and, be, and and do what you do. And, you know, I did and, and, it, and it, it ended well. Definitely. Right, let's have a look. Get one or two more. Um... Oh, uh, so Fez, who just asked that question, but Paulie Mal- Malinaji has said, just a response to your answer, you're a champ, and I can't wait to see you back in the ring. So that's very nice. Um, Aranor, number 10, has asked, what's the next realistic fight that you want? I think with this COVID thing going on, there's no foreigners coming in. I mean, being ranked fourth for the IBF, you know, I think I'm second, third in Britain. Um I think I've got argument for some sort of IBF eliminator. I've yeah. never had, I've never been in that position before. But with this COVID going on, um, you can't get no no one in or no one yeah. out. So it's gonna have to be a British fight. Fowler, Cheeseman, um, Metcalf. I mean, Metcalf would be a great eliminator because the simple fact is it's in the IBF rankings quite high. Yeah. I think it's higher than me, in fact. Um, but it's gonna have to be someone from Britain. Um, I don't really want to get in unless it's top 10. Mm-hmm. So it's going to have to be the top 10 of Britain. I think all them fights are realistic. I don't think anyone would um, say no. So Good answer. Um, okay, we'll take one or two more and then I'll let you go. Um, uh, Derek Colson has asked, um, would you like to have the Liam Smith rematch? And if you could, what would you do differently to get the win? Um I'd take the rematch, of course. I'd take the rematch. <laughs> but I'm not going to come on here and say, this is what I lost. You know what I should have done? I should have moved my head more. I should have mm-hmm. threw more punches. Um, either way, I could have done everything a hundred times better. It was still going to be a hard fight to win. Mm-hmm. But at the time, of course, I'd take the rematch. I'd definitely give it a good ch- give it a good go of winning. Um, but it's a hard fight to win. Um it is what it is. I mean, I can't say, I'm not going to come on here and say that I should have done this. If I'd have done this better, I'd have mm. won that fight. Um, my eyes swelled up early. There's nothing I could do. Yeah. I generally think, without the eye swelling up, I could have been in that fight for 12 rounds. I'm not saying I'd have won the fight, but it would have been a good competitive fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but the eye swelled up and Liam done it. So, you know, there's nothing I can really, there's nothing I can really say about that. Um, he won the fight. Um, I've never watched it back so and from what I've heard Pete, he won the fight quite comfortable so it is what it is Is it just that fight that you haven't watched back or do you not watch any of your fights back? Um, nah I've watched them I've watched the Skeet fight um, I've watched the Mamoon fight I've only watched the Mamoon fight once so I thought it was hard done by I've, never, I've only watched it once and I thought it was hard done by so I've never watched that one again um, I ain't watched the the Mick well, I don't know what he had now. he's the African kid from Birmingham mm-hmm. I've watched the stoppage but I've never watched the whole f- it was only two rounds but I've never watched the, the, the first round um, who else have I lost against I've lost I've watched the Dale Evans loss in Pro Fighter um, and I've watched the Johnny Garton loss in Pro Fighter but no, I watch them all the only one I ain't watched back is Liam Smith um, and the Moon Fight I've watched the Moon Fight once so you know, it's, it's, there's nothing you can do. I mean, this regret, is it. you know, but it is what it is. This is this, absolutely. Um, okay, take one last question. This is a really good one, and, and Karen asks it every time that I do in these live, um, but it's from Karen Murphy, and she asks if you could uh, isolate with five people, dead or alive, who are you choosing? And you can pick anyone, boxers, actors, musicians. Um, Kevin Hart will be in there. Just for, just for jokes, I could watch that go all day. Kevin Hart. Um, it'd be a mixture, but Gordon Ramsay. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And yeah. You can cook. You can cook. Uh, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, Kevin Hart, Gordon Ramsay. It's hard on that, is. I don't watch much TV. Um, what music do you listen to? I listen to like like two thousand R and B stuff, and not really into music, really. 
I don't really listen to music. Even when I'm running on the road, I just listen to myself out of breath. No uh, way. You don't put... You run, listen. Nah, that's yeah. horrible. Horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really listen to music at all. Um, Kevin Hart, Gordon Ramsay. It's a hard one, man. Well, 2000 r and Who's 2000? Usher. <laughs> He's probably the biggest name in like 2000s um, r and I don't know if I, I, I probably have, I don't know, honestly, I can't answer that one. We'll um, give you the two, we'll give you the two, Gordon Ramsay and uh, Kevin Hart. They're two, they're good, two good. To... And I'm having fun. It's, That's it's, it. I'm good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm doing? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on, it's been good. Yeah, no worries at all. And um, looking forward to hearing, you know, a fight get announced for yourself. Yeah, hopefully we'll have some news soon. Yeah, it'll be really good. I won't say that I'll see you at the next fight because the likelihood is yeah, slim don't. to none if it's that match room. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, uh, hopefully someday we'll, we'll get to do an interview. So um, a proper one, a proper one. But um, thank you very much. Appreciate it appreciate and enjoy it. the rest of your time. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye, yeah. Sam. Bye, yeah. bye, bye.